In the last few years, we've seen a pretty sharp rise in popularity in indie games. Indie games being independent games developed by a small team or individual. Some large games which have popped off, which are most well known, include Among Us, Valheim, Untitled Goose Game, and most recently, Cult of the Lamb. However, despite this growth in interest, many indie games still go quite unnoticed by the public eye. One such game is Project Zomboid, a fixed isometric zombie survival game. I had had this game recommended to me on YouTube maybe once or twice before actively looking into it, and certainly never saw it on the front page of Steam. However, once I began to dive into the Zomboid rabbit hole, I discovered something rather incredible. Zomboid is a game which allows you to do many things. If not for the zombies, then I personally feel it would actually make a great live sim game due to the numerous activities you can engage in. But that's not the focus for today's video. When you start a new world, you are able to pick from four locations, including Muldrow, Riverside, Rosewood, and West Point, with some of these spawns being easier than others. After choosing a spawn location, you were then met with a custom character creator, in which you can create somewhat simple yet in-depth characters with a large range of hairstyles, clothes, and skin tones to choose from. Once done, you are spawned in a random location in the starter town of your choice. It is from here that your journey begins. What makes starting a new world interesting, however, is the roguelike-esque nature of each world. And by this I mean that the random spawning of items in buildings is mostly different in each game. As in that, I mean, like, each world that you create, which makes for an interesting start each time. For instance, you might spawn in a police station, which might house some guns or batons and some armor, which is essential if you want to avoid being bitten. Which, after being bit, yeah, I mean, you'll turn to a zombie. I'll get onto that later. Another spawn might be in a civilian home with no tools and a room full of zombies, where if you don't get out quick enough, you can meet a quick demise. Another aspect of creating a new character, which I forgot to mention previously, is the class system in which you can choose your character's profession prior to the zombie outbreak. Classes determine your individual character's starting skills, i.e. an athlete will have greater endurance and stamina as opposed to a mechanic, and professions also grant your character a passive ability. For instance, the burglar class enables you to hotwire vehicles from the get-go, something which is mighty useful in early game. As well as classes, you are able to also pick perks. These are broken up into negative and positive perks. The amount of positive perks you can equip is proportional to the amount of negative perks you pick. This is also dependent on the number of perk slots a perk might either take or give depending on if it's a positive or negative perk as you can see here, with positive ones minusing and the negative ones adding perk points. These perks also add to the randomness of a new game slash character. Perks chosen at spawn are permanent for that character, however, if that character is to die, unlike other games where you might spawn back in with the same character, Zomboid instead forces you to create a new character, with which you can pick a new profession and perks, once again adding to the experience of randomness. And, while on this note, I'd also like to take the time to mention that with your new character, you can go back to where you died and fight your old zombified self. Once defeated, then you can get all your stuff back, which I think is pretty neat. Finally, the last component of character customization is the skills mechanic. Skills determine what your character can and can't do. Choice of profession impacts the initial skills level. However, via collecting and reading books and magazines, or watching TV at certain in-game times, as well as actually engaging in the activity the skill seeks to improve, will also improve the skills level. When you lose a character, however, you also lose the skills and need to start again. It is the intersection of these mechanics that will determine your survival capabilities in Zomboid, and ignoring certain skills could very quickly lead to your demise. Another aspect of the game which can lead to both a greater chance of survival or worse is the multiplayer component. Now from what I've gathered, most public servers are a little bit sketch, so you might just want to be aware of that. So for the most part, I've enjoyed the multiplayer with a friend, and I've had a blast so far as you're able to better focus on specialization when you have someone else to complement your lacking skills. This is something that is greatly noticeable in the early game, when comparing the multiplayer experience with the single player experience. This isn't to say, however, that a capable person can't thrive on their own. Zomboid is also ever-giving when it comes to their gameplay mechanics as well. 
Combat, although simple, is very satisfying and involves either bonking zombies on the head until they either die or fall over in which you can crush their head. Or, if you're attacking at range, you can simply shoot them until they die. Or, there is a third way, but we don't talk about that very much. <laughs> oh no! Oh god! <laughs> Building is another aspect which is rewarding when you know what you're doing. You can build walls, storage boxes and such. There's also cooking which can improve carry weight and this is kind of in depth I guess as an extension as well. You've got the farming mechanic but I've only really scratched the surface with that so I won't comment too much on that. Driving is also pretty fun. Cars handle very well and are pretty customizable and by that I mean like the interiors you can, well I say interiors, you can change like the mechanics of it and stuff like that but a lot of that stuff is sort of high level sort of end game stuff so that's not really an early game concern um but yeah so that's mostly everything i'm pretty sure i could be missing something though so if you know do leave a comment but yeah that's pretty much everything i have to say on this hidden gem so there's probably more i could go into but you know whatever um if you want me to go into a bit more depth maybe just leave a comment and if you like the video don't forget to like it and if you really are feeling up to it uh, a subscribe wouldn't hurt either uh, we're slowly growing, so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.